Hello Internet, welcome back to our tutorial series. Uh, we are, last episode we talked about the autoclave and sterilizing CBMs. This episode we're going to prepare to leave our base. Uh, well first we're going to sleep I think, uh, so why don't we sleep. And I thought while we did that, because this is going to be pretty tedious uh, to to do some of this stuff, um, I thought we would talk about some of the positive things that have come to my life in the last week that have helped me to redirect. Um, but we're going to, before we, so we're going to need to pack up all of our stuff, right? Pretty obvious that we're going to take a lot of this stuff with us. But I thought we would sift through and remove a lot of the duplicate items because we don't, uh, well, our vehicle can accommodate a whole a whole lot of stuff, but we don't need to take everything with us, um, especially because a lot of our food is not going to be viable. We're going to gather up and make some preparations now so that if we struggle to set up the faction camp, we can still take care of things. So, for instance, uh, the bed we're sleeping in, we can't take that with us. We can obviously sleep in our car. Um, but our, our NPC companion doesn't have a bed. So uh, I thought we would gather up some sheets and gather up some planks and stuff that we might need to craft as soon as we get there to start setting things up um, because it'll be easier to gra grab them from the area that we're familiar with than to go to a new place and not really know where we're going or what we're doing. Uh, so that's pretty basic, but we're going to gather some raw materials. Um, I really would have liked to have gotten that freezer in our car before we left because it would have allowed us to butcher all the local wildlife and take a lot of calories worth of food with us. Um, we have a raccoon in this bathroom here. We have a chicken here, which probably has not upgraded yet. And ah, I forgot to wear my headgear, so we didn't get a full night's sleep. Um, and even when that chicken upgrades, it's not going to be anything with a substantial amount of meat on it. I also thought... What are you wielding, my friend? What is that? Kind of looks like a snow shovel. Is it? I, I I literally I can't think of what that would be. Kind of maybe a bindle or something. Let's uh let's give him a gun. It's been a while. We've we've have guns. Let's give him something we don't care about. I'm thinking I don't know nine mil. Probably have a fair bit of nine mil. Where's our ammo? Nine. Yeah, we have a lot of 9 mil, and it's kind of a garbage ammunition I don't really use. Obviously, we should probably just arm him with a 5.56 rifle. I didn't pick up any backup M4s or anything, though. We should have an M4 in here somewhere. We don't have an M4? I thought I grabbed one off of a recent zombie, because it picked it up into my inventory when I didn't want it to. Maybe I dumped it in the car. Uh, yep. I did close my game in between, so we got those pop-ups again. Oh, just drugs. Just left drugs in the car. I could swear I picked up an M4 somewhere. Uh, okay. I mean, yeah. So again, 223, 556 five, rifles are definitely what we should give him because we have an abundance of that ammunition. But I like that ammo, and I would rather just give him something less valuable. Especially because I'm not sure how they even work. There's an M4 right there. Why didn't it show up in my... Just give him the M4. Why even worry about it? Unload the M4. Reload with... No. Don't reload the M4. Reload this clip. With... Sure. Uh, do we have an extra Stanag mag laying around? I thought we had like six of those as well. Obviously we have three... Reload the M4 with a clip. And, man, I swear, we didn't we pick up a whole bunch of Stanag mags? I really thought we did. <sighs> Obviously, we could just go to any number of places where we had killed soldier zombies or whatever. Uh, we even had some Kevlar zombies in the lab over here. So if we really wanted to, we could go get that. For now, let's just give it to him. I'm not even sure how we do this. Talk. Uh, not yet. I need you to come with me. And I want to talk about your equipment. Isn't there a thing that says, let's talk about your equipment? Teach me anything. Miscellaneous rules for combat. I want to give you some commands for combat. Okay, no. Uh, <laughs> never mind. Uh, hold this item, guard this position, 
Uh, I'd like to know more about your abilities. Any hints? I thought there was a... Let's talk about your equipment. Just uh, let's go. Let's examine. Sort armor. I mean, no. We should give him better armor, but... No, I want to talk. Not yet. Let's trade items. He has spears. But I don't want him to have spears. Didn't you have a good spear? Why are, why are they all damaged? Baseball helmet. Let's um, tab over here and let's give him the M4. We really don't need to carry two extra clips on us. We could give him an extra clip. Go ahead and give him a clip. I think that's probably all I'm going to give you. Go ahead and take it. Looks like a deal except yes. Uh, so let's give him commands about combat. I want to change your engagement rules. Uh, okay. Enemies within range of your ranged weapon but don't move. No. Uh, don't fight unless your life depends on it. Attack enemies. Don't fight unless you're... Only attack enemies that I attack first. I guess. He will move freely as needed. Follow you at two paces. He will use ranged weapons. He will not use grenades. Avoid shooting if allies are in the line of fire. Will move freely to attack enemies. What should he do? Okay, change your aiming rules. Take your time. Aim carefully. Uh, or don't shoot if you don't aim very well. I don't know which of those, what those really mean in numbers. Like, um, obviously aim carefully means he will take more time to aim. But don't shoot if you can't aim really well. Also sounds like you would take some time to aim. So I really don't know. Those are just kind of nebulous statements. They don't actually tell me what the thresholds would be or anything like that. Which obviously in a conversation you wouldn't know that. But all of this is obviously set up to micromanage their behavior. So I would like a little bit more information than that. Do not use ranged weapons. Use only silent weapons. Don't worry about shooting. Uh, so he should use this gun, right? I don't know how to force them to equip something. Hold on to this item. Offer what? No. I mean, I gave you a gun. Let's go. So do you have a gun? Oh, he took off his hat. Oh, it's his ball cap? I need some fucking water. Perfect time for a lunch break. Oh, are you dying? Uh, let's give him... Gallon jug of clean water and some food. Why don't you just eat, my friend? I thought they auto-ate, and I thought they also didn't need to eat. So, I don't know what to make of that. Let's just give him a pumpkin. <laughs> uh... Use the item on. I do wish from this menu I could just easily give him something. Uh, let's try using food on him. Can't do that. Okay. Talk. Not yet. Let's trade some items. Uh, man, this is a hard to navigate menu as well uh, because nothing is collapsed. And where is the food? Okay. Give him some blackberries. Sure. Some pumpkin. Sure. And you can have a gallon jug of water. Yes. Let's go. So you should eat and everything, right? He's wielding the jug of water. Why aren't you wielding weapons? Exactly. I'm a little confused by that. I don't really know what to make of that. Okay. He is following us. Um, we don't need him to follow us. How do we do this again? Not yet. Um... Hold this position. Guard this position. Guard this position. See you around. Okay. Be alert. Something is up. Are you just saying that because you heard noises? Yeah, I mean, NPCs, what are you going to do? They're, they're NPCs. They're not brilliant. They're not, you know, they're not a player. <laughs> they're not very smart. I'm not sure why he's holding a gallon jug. Maybe he just doesn't have space in his inventory for it. But you would think he would auto-drop items that are not valuable. Like, he has garbage in his inventory that could be dumped. So I'm not really sure what his deal is. 
Uh, but anyway, let's go out and gather some materials. So primarily I'm looking for sheets and planks um, for making beds. Um, I just thought if we gathered up some planks, it would be uh, just good to have them. Um, but we don't actually like need them, need them. Let's also uh, assign some spaces here. We'll make this our miscellaneous. Which one has like a miscellaneous garbage in it? Cargo carriers, medicine. Okay, so let's move the cargo carriers 100 volume. They can both fit there. So that'll be like our vehicle parts section. So let's go add. Let's remove all of these. Save, add a vehicle parts section right here. Yes, we will make a miscellaneous spare parts type thing right in the middle for crafting reasons. We should really put a workbench in here, but I don't think I'm going to. Any other, what else qualifies as miscellaneous garbage I don't really care about? Spare parts, vehicle parts, no. It's fine. Uh, we're going to make a tools pile. I like to put that, I mean, I guess we need it up front because this is where we would be crafting. So we'll put that right here, tools. Let's make a clothes pile and get that out of the way. So we'll put filthy clothes on the outside, yes. Filthy armor on the outside, yes. Then we'll put clothes, clean clothes and clean armor on the outside because again I don't really care about those parts um in fact we should save this remove our spare parts and put them on the exterior as well remove add spare parts no that's seeds don't don't care about seeds spare parts we'll put those over here yes anything else we can put kind of on the exterior you can put food and drink there. I do prefer to keep those in the vehicle. And I like to keep them on separate piles, but that's not always super viable. Let's, um, well, I definitely don't care about corpses. Let's just put chemicals out here as well, because I don't care about that. Well, we actually, we don't want the chemical pile near where we're going to, jeez. Uh, be drinking because then the tiles will overlap and it will lead to a big eat and drink menu. Let's make a food pile. Yes. And a drink pile. Ah, I hate having them near each other. Cancel that. And a drink pile put in the back corner. Yes. We'll add a medicine pile. Uh, it would be drugs here where the drugs already are. I usually put mutagen in the same pile. Yes. Uh, CBMs can go on our tools pile. I think it's fine. Bionics. Yes. Uh, looking for what else is unbound. Kind of those middle two. Okay, uh, we need a place for ammo and guns. Yes, guns. Yes, uh, what else do we need? Magazines, yes. Uh, we need a books pile. Feeling like I don't have as many spaces as I usually do. Do I usually make my vehicle wider than this and I just didn't realize it? We'll throw seeds on the exterior as well because they just don't matter. Um, perishable food and drink should be on the same piles as regular food and drink. So that is food. We will add perishable food there. Yes, where's drinks? I know this is not fun to watch. Internet, I know. I know it is, but what do you want me to do? Uh, what is this pile? Because I need an unsorted pile as well. Uh, so I'm looking for one north is nothing. Okay, so we will add an unsorted pile there. Yes, 
and we will add an unsorted pile basically everywhere in here unsorted and we will just make the whole building unsorted and save and now if we hit the auto sort key it should sort everything in this building into our vehicle now we don't want to do that yet because we have some garbage we want to get rid of so again I know that wasn't fun so since everything is auto sorted from this building we can just dump all this stuff we don't care about at the moment uh, we'll keep the clothes on us of course we should really put them back on it is summertime so it's quite warm but having them in our inventory is taking up a lot of our space so go ahead and put them on and we'll just be a little miserable it is what it is if we look at our warmth our legs are quite warm okay uh, we want to take down the brazier take down the brazier so that's an item now sort out the garbage we don't want we don't really need the blob globs but we'll hang on to them we'll get rid of duplicates of things let's see if we can combine some of these jugs oh I see it's not displaying the value of the things inside of them so we have no idea how much ammonia is in any of these given bottles that's uh, a problem pour in a container yeah it just doesn't tell us how much is uh How much is in these bottles I don't know how to see that number it obviously displays here but this is not helpful so it looks like all the ammonias are quite full and we can't really do the same thing with the bleach there are so many bottles that we don't know how can we how can we fix this if we pick it up does it display I have 28 ammonia in my inventory drop the jug of ammonia it did drop the bleach so that's an improvement over what we were seeing before I want to combine these bottles so I don't have 15 gallon jugs in my vehicle unload I mean there's just no way to know inventory check it doesn't even say how much is in it it says it's Okay, so there's no good way to do this. Pour in a container. I don't know, just start filling jugs and just hope for the best. Pour in a container. It's frozen now in summertime. Okay, pour into a gallon jug. I, I, I don't know what to do here, uh, but I'm not taking, you know, 10 gallon. Okay, two empty ones we got out of it. So that's a little bit of space savings, but like, what am I supposed to do with this? Okay. Drop the gallon jugs. We have water in the car, so we don't need to fill water. Uh, so let's get rid of some of the duplicates. We'll take all the medicine, so no duplicates there matter. But we don't need all these duplicates of items that we're going to find in our tools pile. We could harvest these for materials. I don't see any reason to do that. So I'm just going to dump a lot of the duplicate stuff. Uh, we'll, we don't really need two electric lanterns or two entrenching tools or three flashlights uh, or three hacksaws. Just take a little bit of everything. I don't need any heat packs or hobo stoves. I hate those things. Players love them. I'm not really sure why. Okay. Don't really need all these lighters either. So we get rid of a bunch of those. Empty matchbook. No, thank you. I also don't need 16 matchbooks. Take the microscopes, take the miscellaneous repair kits. We don't need a bunch of empty MP3 players. Keep an extra one. Don't need three multi-tools. Uh, so I'm not dumping everything. I'm just taking some out of this pile so we don't have the, all of them in our vehicle at all times because we don't need all of them. Uh, like 16 rubber hoses. They're good for crafting, but I really don't want to take 16 rubber hoses with me. You'll see they're half a liter each, uh, which is substantial. Uh, so that's eight liters worth of uh, rubber hoses. We'll take just some of them. Anyway, uh, so we're going to sort through. Anyway, let's talk about something because this is going to be just awful. Um, so obviously I've been talking about a lot of the negative stuff lately uh, in my 
personal life, I've been dealing with some some things. You know, my dog has been a, a point of concern a lot. We've talked about it on the in the last handful of episodes. It's been very upsetting, but we finally got him squared away in a position where I feel more comfortable with him. You know, I'm not as worried about him as I once was. Uh, so it's been really nice to have that off my mind because I was very nervous about my my poor animal. And uh, yeah, just uh, feeling a little bit better in that regard. Um, my brother obviously is a continued source of frustration as he makes poor decisions and involves the family and makes trouble, essentially, um, which has been also very upsetting. We've talked about many times on the channel at this point. Um, that's not going to go away, unfortunately. Had some car issues. Um, basically, back in October, I hit a tree that was downed in the road and damaged my bumper. We're going to need to take all these sports tools with us, by the way. Just to haul this inside, actually. No, stop with the... We'll just stop. Stop with this. Stop with this. Stop. Please. Someone told me just to hit escape uh, instead of hitting I, which is better. Anyway, we just wanted to bring him inside so they will get sorted as well. Again, there's some duplicate tools there, but what are you going to do? Um, so tools are something. Books are another thing that tend to have a lot of duplicates. So we'll pick up some of these duplicates. He had some car issues. Uh, basically needed to replace the bumper. So my family member took that off and was like, why does this have 18 charges? Self-help book. But it's yellow. It has recipes. Is the 18 the list of recipes? No, it doesn't make sense. What's the 18 mean? 18 unread chapters. Okay. Yeah, but a lot of these haven't been read. Okay. It doesn't matter. Don't need the FEMA pamphlets. Don't need the first aid instruction booklets. Don't need anything that's gray, actually. Nothing that's gray matters. So we'll get rid of everything that's gray. Really, Birdhouse Monthly doesn't have any recipes in it. Okay. Uh, none of this matters. Yeah, so uh family member took the bumper off one day and uh, was like, oh, you know, they they basically, they left the house, right? So, like, they were, took the bumper off and then left the house. And I was like, oh, you know, they'll come home and we'll work at it. He probably just needed some extra hands to get the bumper, you know. Uh, it, it wasn't hard. It was just something that was definitely easier with two people. And um, I was like, oh, you know, he'll be home. It's no big deal. Uh, and he came home at like 9.30, so like I couldn't drive my car for work that night, which is really frustrating. Um, but they had bought a junker a few months ago where they were like, oh, you know, if anyone ever needs a car and like one of ours is in the shop, we now, now we have this backup vehicle. And so I was like, oh, I'll just drive that car, no big deal. You know, it's a little, a little annoying, but it's not like, you know, a big deal, it's fine. Uh, and then as soon as I got up there, uh, I stopped to get a drink and the car broke down and I was like, oh, Great. Uh, so I had to call my family and, and get them to come pick me up and swap vehicles. And then I had to use the SUV for work, which I hate driving. And then that morning, you know, we had to run back up. I thought maybe I ran it out of gas because like it said it had a quarter of a tank, but like it stuttered really hard. So I was like, maybe I ran out of gas at the gas station. So we went back up and put gas in it and that's not the problem. And then we had to get it towed, but you can't just like leave a car. You have to go tell the garage that you know, they're going to get a car towed to their place and you got to contact, you know, the tow people and all this. And it was like, well, you know, took up probably two hours that day of that. Uh, and so that was like a real point of frustration to feel like, man, nothing ever works out for me. It's always, you know, you, you think you're going to be fine. Like, oh, I'll just take the other car. It'll be perfectly fine. And then you go and it's like, oh, well, that's right. The universe hates you. So... <laughs> Imagine taking a car thinking it was going to be fine, you idiot. Of course not. I was going to always, you know, destroy your emotions and, and tear you down because you don't deserve even a brief break from the unrelenting depression. So, like, was a little bit upset. Not going to lie. I was having a bad day. Um, and all that stuff, I mean, like I said, the dog and my brother and all this little stuff is like, it just weighs you down. And, and it feels so hopeless when stuff happens over and over and over like that. And, uh, yeah, it was point of frustration, but the next day we got the bumper on my car. It's fine. The, the other car I had to go to the mechanic. Still don't really know what's wrong with that, but, uh, it was upsetting and, and frustrating and all that stuff. And 
Then it was an issue with my mental health provider. I couldn't get a hold of them and like I'm running low on my medicine. So I was really upset about that like because this would be the third time this last year that they've screwed me about my medication and I was really upset about it. Um, but then everything started to turn around. You know, we got the dog taken care of and I we, we got the bumper put on my car and it was fine. And, uh, you know, I... Uh, I, I got a hold of, I, I was so frustrated with my mental health people, I was like, I'm just going to call their home office. Oh, here's the M4 and the Stanag mag. We had them on the unsorted pile. Oh, hiccup, excuse me. So uh, we did have an extra M4. I knew we did. I just couldn't think of where. Yeah, a lot of this is garbage we don't want. So we'll just grab up some of this less useful stuff. Garbage, garbage, garbage. I mean, I don't really need the broken nail bats either. We'll keep them, I guess, as a backup, although we're past the point where they're pretty good weapons. At this point, we would be wanting something way more potent, like an endgame weapon. Don't really need a two-way radio. I don't need all this garbage that's dirty. Um, and then, you know, I was like, I'm going to call their main office and complain because this is the third time this year that they have basically gotten in the way of me and my mental health by, by not providing me with what I need um, and so I was like I'm going to call their main office and complain and I called their main office and I was like you know hey I, I go to this particular office and uh, I'm calling but literally no one answers the phone and then when I leave a message it actually is on like a completely random voicemail it's not uh, it, it's there's no message it just says leave a message and it's like I need to schedule an appointment I don't know what to do and the lady was like, oh, yeah, that's me. Uh, I'm the only person answering phones for every office at the moment. Um, so we're having some issues, you know. And I felt bad immediately and was like, okay, this lady's just trying to do her job. And they probably have people out due to coronavirus. And they are mental health people. So, like, they're probably working a lot with people being stressed out and freaking out and whatever. And I finally got the appointment scheduled and was like, you know what? This is a win, you know. It, it felt bad for days thinking I might not be able to get my medicine um, but we got it sorted. You know, I have an appointment now in two weeks, I get an appointment and I called way ahead of time this time because of issues with my medicine before. So I have like five weeks of medicine. I have an appointment in two weeks by phone. Um, then it's been taken care of. And that was like a real win to get that load off my mind. Essentially, these are sealed jars of fruit jam. So we'll take them with us and we'll get this rotten stuff out of here. And I don't really need the glass bottles. We'll keep the three liter jars because you can use them to seal things um, for like preserved food. Like we could take our meat. We could go kill those animals and turn them into jars of meat. We could do that. Uh, oh, I don't have a canning pot probably. Uh, let's, do you need that for three liter jars though? It's just a screw on. Let's, we'll find out. Let's drop this stuff, drop this stuff. I don't need any of this. So yeah, again, we're just sifting through all this garbage, all the extra stuff that we don't want to clutter our vehicle. Our vehicle has a finite amount of space. Many of these piles need to fit in a 250 liter space and some of them are combined with other tiles. So if we look at our book pile and we hit pick up all, you'll see they take up about 40 liters because we had uh, like 15 in our inventory. Can I toggle all off? We had 10 in our inventory. So about 45 liters, so books, we honestly, I know this list probably looks big to you if you're new to the game or whatever. It's not. Uh, that's a very small pile of books. Like, we don't have a lot of the books I would like to have at this point. Normally, I have a much larger list than this. We've not seen a school or a library or bookstore or anything that would enable us to get a lot of books. Or a mall, even. A mall has a pretty sizable bookstore in it. Um, but usually, I find schools. Schools are, like, my favorite place to go because it's real easy to get in and out. And uh, they have a lot of uh, books to them. So I'm not sure why we haven't found any of those things. Probably just dumb luck, um, unfortunately. Uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll sort that out as we go. Anyway, I got a couple wins is my point. Why is this caseless battle rifle on my battery? Because it has bat in it. And I set up the zone to use bat instead of battery. So that makes sense. Caseless is a good rifle. I like that. Um, I don't love this guy. I really would like him to equip his gun, and I don't know how to make him do that. I think we want to trade him stuff until he has enough money, like, value that we can take some of the garbage from him. I don't know what to give him, though. We don't have great armor set up. 
We obviously, again, should have been working towards tailoring four to get some chitin stuff. But it's also summertime at this point. What's that noise? It's just me, Lyle Darden. Don't be afraid. It's okay. Uh, what else can we sort through? Our garbage pile. We're probably going to want to take all this with us. Medication. We can get rid of like chewing gum and stuff if we have any of that. Doesn't look like we do. We have some nicotine gum. So I don't think that that matters too much. We'll just take all this with us. It's not a big deal. Uh, the unsorted pile we've already sorted through. Clothes don't really matter because they're just going to go on the exterior of the vehicle anyway. Uh, we might as well harvest some additional things. I can do with some sheet metal. Uh, it's pretty easy to get from vehicles, so I'm not super worried about that. Why don't we just real quick grab the home wrecker and smash up some wood to take with us. Uh, and we'll just take like planks and stuff. Uh, since we're not going to be here, actually, we can just smash all of this. It doesn't really matter. Uh, and we don't even need to pull it onto a specific pile. Go back to the SIG. What does it take to make a uh, can? No, what is it? Uh, jar? Okay. Component meat. That's a meat cleaver. No, I'm looking for... Uh, how do we... How do you... How do you... Uh... It's not dehydrated meat. That requires a dehydrator. How do you make a jar of meat? You definitely can. Okay, pickled meat. Serving crisply brined and canned meat, tasty and nutritious craft. Can be crafted. Cooking six to pickle meat? Are you serious? It's just putting meat in a salty vinegar water. Why does that require cooking six? Like, man, we've talked about this how many times throughout this game. There's no reason it should take six cooking to throw meat into a jar with water and vinegar. It doesn't even require salt. What a weird, what a weird recipe this is. Uh, and then have heat of some sort. God, that's so stupid. And it requires a canning recipe. I mean, I guess for the purposes of canning, maybe it requires you to have a high cooking skill. That's real dumb, though. Okay. I mean, that's my opinion. You can take that how you will. Whatever. Can't make pickled meat, apparently. God forbid we just put... It's a jar. We just screw the lid on a jar full of vinegar water and meat. And okay, it doesn't matter. Anyway, and you seal the jar. It's not like it's a complicated thing to, to seal a jar. I mean, if you do canning wrong, you can get really sick. But like... Jars are made, it doesn't matter. Anyway, look, that's going to do it for this episode. Anyway, I was trying to talk about having some victory over the last week and finally pulling out of my depression, but we didn't really get to talk about that. At this point, I think we're ready just to hit the auto sort button and hit the road. So we will see what, what, what I think of between episodes. Maybe there's more to do, but I think we're about ready to get going. Lyle Darden, I wish you would stop wielding your hat and, uh, use the gun I gave you. So for now, that's going to do it. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the episode. I will be back with more tutorial content in the near future. I'll see you next time.